Um, next is going to be Neuroelectrics with Anna Mix. Yeah. So, thanks everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. I moved from Barcelona four years ago to Boston. So I left Gaudí and Miro for the brains of Boston. And I see a lot of friends in the room that have really welcomed me into a new family. So I'm very happy to be in Boston and talk to you about what we are doing. So what does it mean to be human? And I think that brain mind is an example of what it means to be human. It's reading and writing. It's these conversations we've been having. But there is a lot of noise in the middle. And it's not my Spanish accent only. It's hard to, to read and write on each other, right? So the question I'm making today to you is, what would you do if you could read and write directly on the brain? Just think about it. What would you do? I think this is going to change the way humans will evolve, you know, to Juan's uh, evolving humans, is the cognitive revolution. But let me tell you today, that we can read and write on the brain today. And what is most important, I think we can help patients now. So while you think about the future, the call for action today is what can we do today? So when my co-founder who is there, Julia Ruffini and myself, we developed the technology of reading and writing, we thought, what are we going to do with this technology? How are we going to think differently about creating a company and about bringing this to have an impact. And we couldn't do it alone. It's too much of an endeavor, right? So we thought we have to stand on the shoulders of giants. And who are those giants? So we started to think, who are the read and writers of today? And you know, a lot of them are here, the scientists. So we started to deploy our technology to scientists all over the world universities, hospitals. In the last five years, we have deployed more than 600 devices, 45 countries, and more than 10 million accumulated revenues, which, by the way, has created a new way to fund companies. Instead of raising capital from day one, you can actually go to the market, bootstrap, and learn a lot how to grow a company. So these amazing scientists, um, have helped us so much to push the technology to places we couldn't even imagine, right? And we have partnered with them. And by partnering with Beth Israel, Boston Children's, and many of them, we discover that there are a lot of patients today suffering. So in this table, for example, one out of five of you is going to develop a brain disease. And unfortunately, for many of these diseases, we don't have a cure. And my belief is that we don't have a cure because the treatments are not personalized, they are not targeted, and they are not dynamically following these patients in time. So we really think that what we should be working on is in personalized brain therapy. And let me see. You've seen me a little bit with this device these days. So I have hair underneath. You've seen it. But um, the technology that I'm showing today, and I'm trying to demo it if the screen comes out, let me see, in real time. It's, you know, I didn't want to show my brain after uh, Kai's a wonderful performance, you know, her, her performance was amazing, so thank you for that. But this is, the electrodes I'm wearing right now can pick up your electrical signals, right? But what we are most proud of is that on top of doing that, we can really, this is my brain in real time, we can stimulate decide which of these 32 electrodes that I'm wearing are going, oh, it's upside down, sorry. So we can target the electrical currents to specific areas of the brain, non-invasively. It's called transcranial current stimulation, and it's very low voltage applied through these electrodes. So we can eventually target networks on the brain. So to continue, let me tell you how we think this is going to, yeah, we can go to the video. How is going to impact, no, video before. So let me tell you how I think this is going to work out in the real life. We are doing a clinical trial at Boston Children's Hospital with epileptic children that don't respond to medication. So when the patient comes to Boston Children's, the neurologist gives us an MRI or an EEG. 
and we identify, for example, in epilepsy, where is the focus. And then we build in the video that you're not seeing, uh, we build mathematical models of the brain per patient to really understand where to stimulate. And then the patient will take home this uh, device and really provide the stimulation per patient per each individual brain. So you don't see it in the video, but I, I try to make my best. So what have we done? Oh, now it's coming. But um, again, so this is the doctor providing MRI, EEG, it could be any other modality, defines a target that we want to excite or inhibit. We identify that target and then build these mathematical brain models, physiological and biophysical, of each individual patient, and then come with an optimized protocol. How much current, in what positions, with what electrode, to really target that desired outcome. And that talks to the Wi-Fi device that I'm wearing, and at home, you should be receiving personalized brain therapy. And in the future, it may not be transcranial current stimulation. It can be ultrasound. It can be infrared, light. We don't know, right? But I think it's this concept of closed loop, personalized, read and write, that is going to help in many, many brain diseases. So in terms of data, um, as I'm saying, uh, there was one slide before, but we have started on the reading side with Parkinson's with the Michael J. Fox Foundation. We got a big grant to analyze uh, data from patients that did, had an EEG eight years before they developed the disease. And we were able to find biomarkers in the EEG of Parkinson's patients. Um, I cannot see the slide, but it's okay, don't worry. So epilepsy, um, we are doing transcranial current stimulation at Boston Children's. We did 10 sessions, 20 minutes every day, and we managed to reduce seizures by 47%. There are 50 million patients in the world that don't respond to medication. One third of them don't respond. And um, with this intervention, non-invasively, we are showing that electrical stimulation can reduce seizures. This is the slide of Parkinson's finding biomarkers. I can talk more about it. Um, and we're also working on aging. So at the Harvard Institute of Aging, we are really working on uh, cognition and motor skills. So we really think we can have an impact. The question to you is, how can, how can you help us making available our technology to as many patients as possible? I really think that in the healthcare industry, we are very silo. It's drugs, it's devices, it's applications. I think that when I will get sick, I will not care what you're going to provide to me. I just want to get better. I don't want name tags of whether I have epilepsy or Alzheimer. I just want to remember my wife. I just want to be able to walk. I just want to be able to have a quality of life. So I, I really think innovators like us, academics, and the system has to work together to bring these innovations now to patients that today are in tremendous need. So if you have expertise in bringing technologies to the market, if you're interested in other domains that we are not even considering, like addiction, sleep, brain enhancement. There are so many things we could be applying this technology to. So please, and come to talk to my table. Thank you.